Welcome into Inside LAFC Podcast, episode 102. I am Max. We'll be joined by our co-host here shortly, Jordan Harvey, to go down LAFC memory lane and to break down what happened this past weekend in Salt Lake and certainly to spin it forward again to this week against Sporting Kansas City. As always, a reminder to rate, review, download, and subscribe. We'll also head to the LAFC Performance Center to chat with Ilya Sanchez, LAFC midfielder, one of the leaders of the club, and he'll tell you what they are preparing for this game back at BMO Stadium and looking to get a very good taste in their mouth with much better weather. This is Inside LAFC Podcast. We are cooking, and it starts right now. Inside LAFC, episode 102, we continue our legacy series, little combination of looking back and obviously taking a look at the state of affairs for LAFC. With that in mind, we welcome in LAFC legend, all around good dude. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I love you like Max. the sound of that? <laughs> I love it, Max. I love it, man. You're going to have party. Some... Yeah, thank you for having me. You... Uh... You're running the show, man, and I think you're, uh, from what I gather, you're going to have some awesome guests. I'm excited to be here and hopefully be here more often. Uh, your good friend, uh, Stephen Betashore, was here last week, and he set the bar pretty high. So uh, as, I hope you're as ready. Expected, as expected. Beta and I, I think we could probably have a podcast of our own. We probably connect once a week and inevitably end up talking about LAFC 2018-19. So um i'm sure we'll be touching on a lot of that today i'm sure you touched on it with him uh in the last podcast or whenever you spoke with him um but it's uh it's exciting to have my like be on here with you again it's been a while um i've been watching you now from afar with all the the commentary it's been amazing everyone's doing a great job and uh it's nice to come home though right max it is. It's nice. nice we're, all, we're cozy blanket. at home. Yeah, nice warm blanket. LAFC black and gold <laughs> blanket at this Inside LAFC podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, you and Beta having a podcast would be a great idea, but it would force me to look for new guests, and I I'd probably have to get Team Security Paul on here, which isn't a bad idea because he's more he's more famous than I am. I mean, he's more famous he than more photos. Honest. He has more photos and autograph requests. I sit there and I get one, and he gets like ten. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to have him on at some point, um, for sure. Yeah, we, 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 we'll, we'll dabble. He's a little reluctant, but we'll get him on here. Oh, he's going to be reluctant. That's just his personality, but he'll come on, for sure. So, Jordan, I did want to look back. This is I feel like this is the time, and I mentioned that to Beta, that you know, the LAFC supporters and community has been around approaching year seven, and now's the time where you can look back, and there are certain memories, and there are moments you can spot and say, this was special, and... It's for supporters, it's for players, current and past, including you in 2018. And uh, I remember that. And you obviously have your L.A. ties. And I'm curious as to when you uh, when you started to discover not only about LAFC was a club that was coming up that maybe you'd want to be part of, but those first conversations with John Thorrington and Bob Bradley, when did those begin? And when did you start feeling like May I could this could be the next step of my career? Yeah, I mean – Leaving Vancouver after seven years was a big shift. Um, and I think anybody would be lying if they knew what LAFC would now be in this current moment. And so it in your question, you said discovering. And I think that's exactly what we did. We were just discovering everything as we went along. And again, I mean, I've, I've said this a number of times, but LAFC had the foundation in place. John Thorrington knew what was needed for a team to have success in year one. And um, that was a training facility, albeit we trained at UCLA for a period of time and then moved into it, a stadium. Um, and then I think as far as a roster is concerned, there was a good mixture of new guys coming in while obviously having some, uh, some experienced guys in MLS that knew kind of the ins and outs. And Listen, I signed on after, you know, Bob Bradley and his staff came in and Carlos Vela was signed. So like 
it was exciting coming into this and uh, going to the stadium with my family with the construction hats and just seeing everything built. And I think that was uh, the most exciting part was just the anticipation of yeah. uh, being able to get in the stadium and start. And I think that's what's different with any time you start something and then you see it come to fruition. Um, you know, people know what to expect coming into LAFC. And it's a standard that we set back in 18. And I'm so grateful for those moments and, so, and those people and, and just the opportunity because, um, you know, I was, geez, 34 going into that first season. So it wasn't like I was any spring chicken. And, um, and so I just came in with not crazy expectations, but knowing that I wanted to come home and knowing that the people that I was coming to LA with, knowing John Thorrington, knowing uh, some of the players like Stephen Betasher, um, some of the other players around the league, Benny Fellhaber, um, not having worked with Bob, but knowing Bob, um, just his reputation and how he goes about his business, detail oriented. Um, you know, I was just so excited to just come in and and um, with no expectations, just try my best. And obviously it worked out. By the way, that means you're hitting you hit the big 4-0 this year, huh? I did. I did hit the big 4-0. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, wow, 40s are great. I've been through them. They're yeah. Very good. You'll um, them. Yeah, of course. And, you know, hitting the big 4-0 and, um, you know, we have, and we'll probably get to this with LAC2, but Junior Gonzalez is the new LAC2 head coach and Fabian Sandoval is one of the assistants. And on occasion, they'll be like, hey, we had an injury. You want to jump in? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, so today I jumped in. It's like the How most exciting Oh, it went well. It went well. They put me at right back. I'm a shocking right back. I have no right foot. Um, but just to get out there and run with the guys, I'm like, you know, at first you're like, you know, I just retired two years ago. But then you're like, wait a second, I'm out here with these 23-year-olds, 22-year-olds down to 18 and uh, still holding my own. So it's it's fun, man. It's fun. Big 4-0. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it in. It's all good. <laughs> And when you're saying 34 to come back here, what are your expectations for this? Because I always use that first game in Seattle as a benchmark. We talked to Beta a lot about it. I remember I was working for ESPN. I'm in the booth, and you were one of the reserves. You were on yeah. the bench getting warmed up. Jean Latino was the starting left back, this uh, very talented uh, rookie uh, who's done some great things in his career since. Um, were, were your expectations there to maybe get some minutes? Because what would happen, eventually you'd become a key member. You would be the starting left back. You'd play some center back. You'd play a lot of positions uh, for LAFC. But what was those expectations about playing time and where you were going to fit in? There was no guarantee of playing time. I wasn't coming in to be the starter. I think it was coming into preseason. They had they had drafted Joao uh, really high up. Yeah, number one. Him and Tristan, one and two. And, um, you know, I came in just, listen, I'm going to be a mentor. This is my role, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try to take on everything that the coaching staff has given me. And, um, you know, Seattle was good, but I think right after that, we had a stretch of some difficult games. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't really ever talk about myself in this light, but I know in just talking with guys like Ante and Bob at the time, I was able to come in because I was 34 and I'd played in many different systems and had many different coaches and everything that the coaching staff was telling me, I was able to pick up very quickly and take on board. And I think in that regard, they like to have an older guy that set, set the tone and had, had was much like an example on the field um, because we were all kind of diving into this new system and this new way of playing. And it was, you know, if you watch 2018 and 2019, definitely, um, I think we brought something to the table that no other team has done in this league, uh, the style of play and the way of the entertaining and front foot football that we uh, brought to the table in MLS. It was new. And I don't think anybody with that group in particular, and I was, again, 34, played on teams that had a little bit of success, but nothing crazy. Um, with players like that, to then buy into a system and be able to have that success is is unique. It's very unique. We're going to have you back on the podcast in future episodes. And I would love to look back to the great memories and all that is accomplished here and all, and all the things that, have, that you have been able to see firsthand being here now as a player and as a coach, by the way, Jean Latino 
at Spezia in the Serie B in Italy. So that's nice. where Zhao is spreading nice. his wings. Uh, real quickly, before we'll talk with more current events, was there something that stood out in that first year where you said this is this is a special place? And I go, I I, I can't believe this happened. Something that I mean, with all the great memories, maybe something that comes to comes to mind immediately. Yeah, I think. Um... You know, we had, uh, there's two things that came to mind. And when you initially said that, it was the the home opener. And thankfully, I was a part of that game. And it was, you know, a, a crazy game that came to an end with a Laurent Simon knuckleball that uh, Stefan Fry couldn't handle. And the crowd went nuts. And I just remember in that game, they handed out these little, like, flashing cards. And you've probably seen it in photos. And I've never stopped in the middle of a game and just taken in the crowd. But in that game, I stopped. It was maybe – I was going to say shit. Um, it was – it might have even been Laurent's shot. It, you know, that moment, I remember just – it was a set piece and looking around and going, holy cow, where am I? This is special. Seeing the cards. Um, and then that happened, which made it even crazier, and LAC just took off. You know, um, you know, the other thing that I knew made it very special and was unique was the ownership group and their involvement in the team from the get go. Um, you know, Larry Berg coming to training sessions, you know, at UCLA, all the training sessions uh, and, and other owners um, having a initial team um, meal at Larry Berg's home, like those types of things that you don't see other ownership groups do. They aren't that involved. Um, having conversations with them, knowing that they know every roster, where the players are, where they've come from. Um, you know, uh, their 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 kids, Zach. You know, he he knew every Zach was everywhere every player, every MLS player. Like they were bought in, and I remember going, you know, if if this is what the ownership groups like, then you know that they are in it for the right reasons, and they are going to um, invest in the resources to help us be successful. Um, not in, you know, the luxury items or like the, the glitz and the glamour. It's like the, the real things that matter um, so that we would have success on the field. And, and that's the way it was. Larry is a great guy to have a soccer football conversation with. I, I think we'll have him on here to make, look back as well. It'd be a great. Maybe we'll get Zach to me, a, a package <laughs> deal of the birds. Oh, yeah. Because they love this team. And that's a great that's a, a great going down memory lane with you, uh, Jordan. Look forward to doing it again. But uh, let's talk about more current events. It's something that people want to put in the memory, and that was the game at Real Salt Lake for a variety of reasons. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but, you know, there are games that you do want to kind of get out of your mind and your body. And as a player, and I'm not saying you had too many, but every player's had those games you want to do. What is the process to moving on to get a, a, a fresh canvas ahead of the next game? I think if it was a 3-0 loss where it had been perfect conditions and they played us off the park, I think we'd be having a deep conversation right now. Um, I think because of the circumstances and the weather and I think and uh, I mean, I know that this is going to be one where it's it is what it is. Let's move on. Like, let's just forget about this whole event and move on to the next because it was so unorthodox the and i and i was talking to a bunch of different people about this topic but you know at the beginning of the game the grass looked beautiful it was an amazing pitch and it looked like it was going to be a perfect game um and then they called it on i believe it was lightning or weather initially and then all of a sudden uh you know everything just came crashing down but i wonder and this was the conversation i was having is would they maybe started different lineups both teams uh steve and pablo if they had known that it was going to be like that because you saw um you know some players looked like they might have been on ice skates and some actually looked like they had the low center guard gomez looked like it, it made him better you know out there and so um that was an interesting point that i thought about throughout the game is man i wonder if we would have had a different lineup had we known this um and then two it's just one that you chalk up to that's never going to happen again in our careers most likely. <laughs> and it's a game that was on a foot of snow. And, uh, you know, how do you analyze a game like that? You don't, you just move on. And yeah. so I think that's what they'll ultimately do or will ultimately do is just move on to Kansas city. 
I wonder what the the snow uh, totals were. It had to be a foot. I, I I'm thinking it was more than a foot, but we'll we'll find out the deep. I'll, maybe I'll holler out at the Salt Lake folks and uh, see what they what the final verdict was. But <laughs> as we move forward and look, LAFC they, they lost a lot of players in the off season, and um, the belief is they'll get some. They'll be able to fill things out a little bit more as the season moves on. Certainly with the summer window. But I was looking at the the bench for the game. Uh, against Real Salt Lake, and they really had to lean into young players. They had Eddie Segura, who's coming off, you know, missing better part of two seasons. And then other than that, it was young players uh, who they're going to have to lean into at some point because they're not going to be able to, you know, they have to sh- get the depth there. But And we've spoken to John Thornton. He says the young players, if they train well, they are going to get action. So you're you're there with the team and you oversee it. Looking at those guys, and there's several of them, and I, I mentioned Nathan Ordaz, who did play a lot, but he's still a young player. Uh, yeah. How do you see them individually or collectively contributing here? And where do you see the opportunities for some of these guys to make a, an impression? It's interesting. You say young players, and I think of the LAC two guys that maybe went up on. Yeah, Luca time. Bombino was on the bench. These are guys that are, you know. Don't get me started on Luca Bombino. He's one of my favorite players in the club. So <laughs> Don't even get me started. Um, I love the kid. Best attitude you're ever going to see. Um, does all the right things. I I was so excited for him to to dress in this game. I would have loved if he would have gotten on. Um, but when you say young guys, it's like some some key signings, right? So you bring in an Omar Campos. He's he's you know 21. Um, you bring on uh, a David Martinez, 18. Uh, Tommy Angel. He's still 21. So these are young guys that um, you know we we hope will make a huge impact and have a lot of potential um and david martinez you're just seeing some of it you know in this game when he came on but he hasn't he hasn't even been into a lot of the preseason so he's still relatively new just uh you know a few weeks coming in in training you know so um i think you're going to see a good progression from these young guys um i do hope and it's my goal and and part of my job is to make sure that we have LAC two guys ready for the first team when called upon. Um, you know, last year, Diego Rosales moved up to a first team deal within the season. You had a guy like Lorenzo de Valle, who is another guy who I absolutely love, who unfortunately uh, had a knee injury. And so he'll be out for the year. Um, but he was somebody that I, I know first team staff was very excited about and John included. Um, and so you have a lot of young guys that, um, are really developing with this LAC two team. And I think the players who came into the first team throughout preseason, got a a lot of time with the first team. um, You're seeing them at a very high level. And as you trickle down and I don't want to go too much into the weeds, but you even have Academy players who have been playing with the second team in training sessions who have now gone back down to the Academy and done very well with their Academy team. So you're seeing real alignment. You're seeing a pathway and, um, you know, while we signed guys from outside of our academy and, and say second team um, going in, these are these are really quality players that you're going to see develop throughout the years. And we have the coaching staff to do it. Uh, Mark Dos Santos, Ante Razov, um, Steve Rondolo, uh, you know, they've they've worked in developmental football. Um, Ante's developed so many players in this LAFC teams um, and knows and, and carries this game model inside and out. Steve the same and Mark. So it's it's uh, it's an exciting younger group with still room to add. And I think that's where I'm sure John uh, alludes to is that there's still room to add. And it's you know, you see LAFC throughout the years now and definitely in in uh, 22 when we've had success, the summer signings, you have to leave yourself open to some summer signings and making something um, like a push in that back half. Ideally, you have players. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season and the beginning of preseason, so you can build up to something that's ideal, but it doesn't always work out that way because there's so much movement in the off seasons. And that's all based on the success that LAC had the previous year, because you can't keep all these players when you have that success. Every marketplace. And even when LAC has been successful, they've been active and you wonder where's this guy going to play. And they always seem to fit nicely into the jigsaw with this team. So a lot to look forward to. You could bet your bottom dollar there's going to be activity. Uh, we spoke to Steve Chirondo last week, and I've, I've spoken to him a couple times at training, and this is something he didn't get last year because of the busy calendar, 53, 54 games. 
And obviously that takes away from training. He's excited. And he's mentioned this several times about having a full week between games where he can get guys better. And he is excited about that. He's excited about how the coaching staff that can do it. Uh, take us inside the, that preparation and how uh, with this more traditional calendar with a week between games, I think they don't have a midweek game until May, I believe, how they get the most out of it and how you've seen that work with these players, in particular, I mean, with young or old and how they, how that helps them get ready for a game without game after game. So just real quickly, taking you back to 18 and 19, those teams had full preseasons. Uh, you know, Bob and his staff, we were able to implement game model from day one and stick with these players. And it was one day a week. So when you have that ability to be able to coach and to teach, um, you see it on the field. And I think that's what Steve's talking about. When you had, you know, 50 plus games last season, um, you're not teaching, you're, you're preparing, you're reviewing and you're preparing for the next game. There's no room in between to uh, kind of go over or review um, game model type situations and areas of, of uh, concern and that need improving uh, because now you're going into Champions League. Now you're preparing for this. It's impossible to do. Um, and so when you have one day a week, you can review, you can also now go into training with an idea of what you want to work on that week, really focus on it, have the players um, for multiple days, um, watch video, focus on specific details of the game model that you can then execute on that week. And it's impossible to do that when you have a game. And I think we average the game every four days. Yeah. So, you know, when a player plays a game, the next day is off or you're maybe doing a regen, but you're you're then coming in the next day and it's really just getting your legs going. Then the next day you're preparing for the game. That's the following two days. So it's it's uh, you're playing catch up and it's impossible to really coach and teach and, and learn in all honesty. So, um, yes, that's a big difference. It's not an excuse by any means, but it is the reality of of when you have that many games, it's really impossible to implement ideas. And an incredible staff and so many people helping out from the first team. It's so much resources there that I know people will say we'd love to have all these games, but you you see you'll you'll I, I would imagine, Jordan, you feel the benefit of these trainings, not only here in this season, but the following season when we anticipate LFC having more fixtures. And not only for the team, but these individuals, wherever they may they may roam, will get better. It's just, it's just I, I was pretty taken by how uh, steadfast Steve was about that and going, we're, this is exciting. This is, yeah. games are supposed to be exciting. He's, he's excited about the training. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, I said it. And I think you saw it in uh, at, at BMO against Seattle. Um, I thought it was a quality performance. There were some, you know, things that uh, you could go, look at and say, all right, that's preseason, maybe legs here and there. But I thought you saw um, a really professional performance against a quality team missing a few different guys, but I think it was a great first step. And then you go to Seattle or sorry, you go to Salt Lake and uh, you know, you hit a snowstorm. So I think coming back against Kansas city um, again, you have a full week of preparation to probably go over uh, the Seattle game, there's not much to take from Salt Lake, in, in my opinion, and uh, prepare for another amazing game uh, with our fans. Well, let's let's talk really briefly about Sporting Kansas City. They're always historically one of the best teams in the Western Conference. Last year, they, they had a dip. I think this year, expectations are high. Uh, they've tied their first two games, felt they should have won last week, had a, a controversial moment there late, but still very experienced, very talented. Alan Polito's healthy. This is uh this is going to be a tough out, and they, they, there's history here. These teams, as conference foes, have played a lot. Uh, preparing for that game in particular, you know, what are some of the things you think uh, the, the the club will be focusing on to have success as they return to BMO? Uh, you know, Peter Vermes has his teams, has his players, and he he sticks with these guys. I think this this group, the last two lineups that you've seen, there's been. Um, some new players that have come in and they've, they've actually developed through their system. Um, but they've had a tough start with fixtures. So they've been away to Houston, which is a good, good team. 
um, and then home to uh, Philly, which obviously has has a good side. And now they're now they're coming to L.A., so it hasn't been easy for them, um, you know. And I think we've lost to them in the past at home. Um, we've beaten them in the home opener with the Amande scoring. So yeah, there is some history. Um, it's always a quality squad that that tries to play hardworking. Um, you know, a reflection of Peter Vermes, you know, detail oriented, hardworking guy. Um, and uh, they have their staples, you know, Shalouis, uh, Russell, um, like you said, Polito's healthy. That's huge for them. Um, and then like very hardworking, industrious, but quality players in the midfield and uh, a, a solid back line. I mean, um, it's crazy that Melia is still, still trucking, man. I'm happy <laughs> that you still got guys that, uh, anytime I see guys that I've played against still still out there, um, I get excited. Uh, but he's still a quality leader and, you know, uh, Kansas City through and through. So, you know, you know what you're going to get in, in that regard. I think, and this is still going back to Steve, I think um, when LAFC is at its best, it's focusing on the qualities and, and, uh, and, and their – their game model, our game model. It's it's focusing on. I'm so used to us commentating and needing to be. It's okay. Uh, Do it. And now that we're now that it's it's out in the open, I'm wearing LAC and it's. <laughs> yeah, like, I was about to say you're wearing an LAC hat and shirt, dude. But like so, we, um, <laughs> you know, I think it's we're at our best when when we're focusing on ourselves and and how we play. Um, obviously, there's going to be tactical things that Steve is very good at when it comes to opponents. Um, but as long as this group. Um, continues to build on what they did in the preseason and the game against Seattle. Um, I think that that just brings confidence when you focus on yourself and not necessarily worried about every other player, um, you know, Kansas City has. Good stuff, Jordan. Uh, got us inside there, and it was good to uh, look back uh, to 2018. The memories are great. We'll have you back, and we'll do it all over again in a, in a couple weeks. Yeah, you'll have to have Beta with me here. That'll be fun. I'm down with it. I am down with it. We we have the technology to, to have a three box here. And, no uh, way. By the way, one thing about 2018, I'll let the cat out of the bag. We had a deal with a hot tub company, and it was – we pulled a hot tub, and I jumped in the hot tub, and we did a commercial, and Jordan and Beta jumped in the hot tub with me. Uh, and Bob Bradley was 40 yards away shaking his head going, I no, no. Most relaxed interview I've ever had. Yes. I, I didn't have any sunscreen. Toes. And the toes. Yeah, you were in that thing for way too long. And the water in the hot tub, because uh, it's it wasn't it wasn't chlorinated, so it, the sun d reflected. I don't know how you call it. It hit me, and I looked. It was I was very painful for the next few weeks. But anything for anything for the club, Jordan. <laughs> we'll have the video. <laughs> we'll find the video. I don't actually yeah, keep the thing. video away. We don't need to see that. Yeah, I'm sure they'll, they'll dub it in. Somebody will dub yeah. this in. Yeah, good good times. Two thousand times. <laughs> starting starting in there and and building on that has been uh man it's been the highlight of my career so i'm glad that we've uh we've connected then and we're still going now max we're still going now man i love it jordan harvey one of the best man and part of this club and we're always thrilled to have him with his incredible know-how and take you inside uh what the club was like before and certainly right now so many exciting things and we'll get ready with uh, the game at BMO Stadium against Sporting Kansas City on Saturday inside LAFC. We'll continue. We'll we'll get down to the Performance Center and see what the club is doing to prepare for SKC. We'll be back. We are back here on Inside LAFC Podcast. A good friend of the program, Ilya Sanchez, joins us. Our first conversation of the year, Ilya. I got to start with hair. You had the cornrows in week one. One week and done, is that it? That's how it looked like, no? Uh, <laughs> uh, who knows? Um, that was um, a great idea coming from my... Uh, lovely teammates uh, Murillo and Eddie Segura and I just wanted to join um, them with their hairstyle so yeah, that was it yeah we what's won what's going on you got the cornrows yeah the 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 the, uh, the blonde haired guys you know this uh, year schedule this season 
it's uh, relaxed compared to last season, right? So we need to find uh, things to do <laughs> uh, in our weeks, uh, other than training and uh, preparing uh, the weekend game. So already three blondies in our team, uh, only two with braids, so they needed a third one, and that was me. Yes. Well, I thought it looked fantastic and uh, I w I, we all welcome it to be back. I just know it takes a lot of work. How long does it take you to, to get your hair like that? No, I mean, I, I went to probably one of the best uh, stylists uh, around East LA and, and she did it in 45 minutes. Like it was uh, amazing. She wasn't even looking. She was like getting my hair done and talking to other clients and, and people uh, at the barber shop. Wow, you got your own stylist, Ilya? This is LA. No, no, you, you... <laughs> no I'm just running with it. She's not just my own, uh, it's not my personal stylist. It's just uh, a lady that uh, my teammates uh, usually go to, and I just join them in, in their hair adventures. Uh, not too far from the performance center where you can go get, you know, a nice little new look. 15 minutes. Look. 50 minutes away and uh, after practice, uh, she's available. Next one coming, I don't know if that uh, I should say this, but exclusive for the LAFC podcast. Next one coming uh, will be David Martinez and his. Oh, he's got, yeah, it's all out. So he's, he's going to tighten it up a bit. He's been asking for, yeah. He's asked for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wants to wait as I did uh, for the others to get their hair done and then uh, he will do the same. This is exciting. Well, this is what this podcast should be about, about what you guys are doing with your hair. And uh, <laughs> he we got spot. an exclusive here, so we'll see it. First I'm time. done. I'm done with the braids uh, team. Uh, okay, excellent. The third, the third man. I'm going to ask you, because you brought it up, about the the time you have now that you didn't have a week ago. I mean, a year ago. And, you know, I saw you just guys giving, when you guys were... Just giving, Max. Don't take every word I say seriously. No. We have more time, obviously, but that was a joke. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I must, let me rephrase that. But I, I, it's a positive, because I spoke... Jordan was on here, and we talked to him about it. And we talked about it uh, with Steve Chirundolo. And they're all excited about having week where you can work on getting players to be better. And it's hard to do that when you have game after game. Uh, how have you guys been able to approach that? And how have you seen the growth where you have a full plan of training? It is huge for us. It's very important to, to have that time uh, week after week to keep improving and, and keep getting better uh, on details. Uh, our game model is very strong, as you know, and, and as we all can see. Uh, but uh, you can just add, uh, change, uh, and improve details. And uh, this is a Steve uh, team, and uh, it has uh, his own uh, model style, right? So um, now, uh, finally, we have uh, more time uh, between games uh, to not just analyze uh, past performances and look for improvement on those uh, heading to new opponents, but also to get into detail and perfection uh, within our game model and what Steve wants uh, from, from it. And that's what I obviously meant. And that is a, a, a great opportunity, just very different from a year ago. We know where it was game after game and who knows, maybe next year it'll get back to that taking advantage of that opportunity now Let, let's say it this way like last season uh steve and the coaching staff uh, ante mark oka they had to be very very creative uh the way that uh, they prepared the sessions because the main goal was to recover uh our bodies right sometimes also our minds our legs need uh to be fresh for for the following game in a short uh, period of time uh, and you try to be creative and add also some tactical principles, uh, exercises where you can work on those uh, while you are recovering, which is not easy to do because, as I said, it's not just your body, but your mind as well. And sometimes you don't have uh, 
the mindset ready for or to work uh, tactically and technically, right? So this week, uh, sorry, this season and with these kind of weeks, um, yes, you still have to be creative and, and try to find ways uh, for the players to uh, work on what you want them to work on. But uh, at least uh, you can dedicate full sessions to that, not just split the session or trying to uh, make an exercise where you can find both uh, recover or region uh, purposes, but also uh, working on, on tactically. That's a great way to put it. And I, I you can see the recovery and then getting to the program with the training. So uh, this is a, a I, I can see why Steve and company are very excited about that. They can uh, put that whole program into effect and let's, let's spin it forward. And partner, I wanted to have you on this pod this week, as you mentioned your history with major league soccer and uh, playing sporting Kansas city, uh, which is very near and dear to you. I speak to people in that affiliate with that club and they, they just, you bring up your name, Ilya, and they light up that you've left such an incredible impression, just like you've left an impression here. Uh, I wonder, does your approach change? Is year three now with uh, LAFC? Does it change when Sporting Kansas City uh, comes on the schedule? How do you approach it? How do you approach facing a team, not just a club you played for, but a club that you, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, a, a lot of relationships, a lot of good friends there? Love this question because it's exactly the feeling I'm having. Uh, this week uh, for two main reasons. I think that, as you said, uh, this being my third season with uh, LAFC and having experienced uh, a very, very successful season, the first season here, and then a very tough season last season. For me, a great season, but still uh, with no trophies uh, lifted. Uh, I think that um, this third season... Uh, I take the game against Kansas City a little bit differently. The way that um, I can feel, and I'm being completely open with you, I can feel now already more an LAFC player uh, within its history than an sporting Kansas City player, which is hard to say because I spent five years there and with uh, very strong teams and we fought for pretty much uh, everything till the end. But um, something started switching uh, uh, last off-season um, with my feeling here versus uh, what I had or experienced there. Um, tough times, uh, I think, that bring you that kind of feeling uh, when you really feel uh, what uh, you are doing and, 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 and you are really part of the the outcome and the success of of, uh, of a place of an organization and that's uh, uh, that it's what I think uh, it's uh, going through uh, my mind and body uh, right now and uh, coming from a hard uh, experience an embarrassing show uh, this past weekend uh, I'm sorry it has to be against Kansas City, but <laughs> my frustration needs to go somewhere. <laughs> I need to take this out of, of me. And I, I hope and I, I'm sure that uh, that's the same feeling that uh, most of us are having right now. So uh, these are the two main reasons why I take this game uh, differently than in the past. That's really interesting, Ilya, and I'm glad you shared that because I think some players probably feel that way, but that transition between one club to the next, it's you know when it happened. You know, I said, I feel like this is, I, I, I'm i affiliated. I, I feel like I represent this LAFC. I, what happened in the past, I really loved it. I enjoyed that, but this, it, you felt it this year. That's really interesting. I think it was uh, a step uh, forward in my career. Um and that's because of LAFC. Uh, you know, when you have to leave a place where you've been successful, where you, you've been happy, where you've been loved and you love uh, the people there uh, after five seasons, it's like, um, and being 30 years old, 
you kind of not expect uh yes you can repeat what you've done there but you don't know you're not sure if uh, or maybe your expectations are not to improve or 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 to to uh move forward uh in your career uh at that age uh, and a different team and environment right so and that's what happened right away with me and uh it's even i don't know it feels even better when you don't expect it uh and 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 you got it you still i mean there's a lot of familiar faces there vermes and Kerry zavagnan you played with i mean they were your coaches and johnny russell to um shallow these are guys you know have you, have you have you get on the phone for this or is this one of those things where you go no we're, we're not we're we're not going to communicate this week we'll talk afterwards no no i have uh Andrew Pontas, i have my my brother alan Pulido, as well yes yeah and and i have uh you know um mike sammy from the staff all the trainers uh physical coaches people at the front office like kansas city is home to me i'm not gonna lie uh, but um and I always get invited uh, for breakfast on a game day when we play against them <laughs> here. Uh, I'm not going to join them this time. Uh, you can't. You can't. That's it's game day. No, 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 no. Because uh, it's a 7 uh, 30 p.m., if I'm not wrong, uh, kickoff. And uh, it's the second home game of this season. I'm very excited about it. And um i just rather to to do my routine uh stick to to it and and i will see them after that says a lot about you Willie, that they will say we'll have a breakfast with you a day game a game day and you play for the other team i mean that's unheard of but they they feel comfortable enough around you they know that it's this is Ilie. he's yeah. well they have a, a a particular way to run things in Kansas City. Uh, obviously, Peter Bamis and his coaching staff are one of the most experienced staffs in this league. And um, they've been uh, trying to give all the freedom to their players, uh, even on game days. If the game is late at night, uh, they have a morning off uh, to take care of themselves, but still to uh, not uh, put any pressure on them before the game. Uh, so that's why uh, that helps or, or to, to, to get uh, these kind of meetings with uh, opponents or former uh, teammates. Um, uh, and obviously we have a great relationship uh, between each other, all of us. And, and, and I think that, yeah, it can be surprising, but is not for me, it's not for them because um, we've been part of that environment uh, for many years. That's brilliant. That's fantastic stuff. And it just shows, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, how this league works and the relationships. I feel it too. Man. I, I see so many people from other teams and places. I love to keep in touch with them. And it's. Uh, but you know what, Max? The, the last time I went to their hotel um, for breakfast uh, on a morning uh, game day, um, we tied that game one one. Uh, we we had a busy week. I remember uh, coming from a Champions League game and having to face them, and then having to play uh, another Champions League game after, like uh, right after. But still, uh, no excuses. It didn't work for me for for LAFC to get the three points. So. Let's change strategy so, and, and go for the three this time. Are you are you you're a superstitious person, Ilie? No, no, but I'm. Um, how do you say this? <laughs> Rencor. Sometimes you you keep that. Uh, how? Hold grudges. Hold grudges. Yeah. Hold, uh, hold grudges. grudges. Yeah, grudges. we're here. Alonso Corona like, helping out with yeah. translation. <laughs> I told you, he's my partner. <laughs> Partner in crime, yes. In crime, <laughs> with no crimes. But, no crimes uh, are being committed. It's just, it's just an expression. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, no, you know, um, you try to do uh, your routine, and and that was uh, stepping out of it yeah, for okay. a bit. Uh, and of course, it didn't affect or have an impact on on my performance. But yeah, 
Uh, do what works. Say. You you do what works, and you don't deviate from that. Yes, but I'm not superstitious. Not superstitious. Uh, no, I don't think about it. Uh, I try to 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 just focus on what I can manage, and and that's what I I'm gonna do. Uh, I will have to cook my own breakfast and and head to the stadium <laughs> after. <laughs> I bet you make a cracking breakfast there, Ilya. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and his body's a temple. If you see Ilya, he, everything is good. I mean, you you're the you're the guy, first one in, last one out of training. I see you there with your food. It's very specific. Uh, and what, by the way, I want to ask you one thing that you you do. And I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you always keep an eye on the younger players. And sometimes you sit with them. And I've talked to you about this because it's a young team now. That whole bench is very – the whole bench against Real Salt Lake were uh, Academy, LAFC2, new players like David and Tommy that are just joining it. Um, what is – why is that important to you first and foremost to, to have that communication? And what is what have you seen works when uh, you give those guys an ear or something that they can bounce off of you, you, a guy who, with such status with the club? And why is it important to have those relationships? I think that um, because they are the ones asking for that. They are the ones that uh, you can see uh, have interest on uh, anything you can add to their games. Um, they are young, but prepared. Uh, YVP, right? Um, young but prepared. <laughs> Did you just come up with a? Did you yeah, come up with, up with it. <laughs> you are the YBPs. YBPs. Um, and not they put VP the work in yet, but VPs. Um, they are prepared. Uh, I think that um, they are here because they earn it. Um, but that doesn't mean uh, they are gonna get a long career out of it. That's their goal. That should be uh, their everyday goal. But the most difficult thing to do is not to make it, but to maintain your uh, position or even to improve it, right? If you can uh, play more games and you can uh, have better performances and then you can uh, be a starter uh, regularly and then somehow you want to move to a different team or league or have a long career out of uh, this start. Um, I think that should be their goal. And the only way to be able to achieve that is that if you improve and improve and improve and improve every day. Uh, doesn't matter how much you improve, as long as you move forward, as long as you get better every day. So, um, they ask for it. Uh, they got here probably following this strategy, and now it's not time to stop. Um, and we are here to do our jobs, uh, but we always have time uh, and room to 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 help each other. So, for me, uh, what makes me, what motivates me to keep doing it or to help at any time is that when you tell them something, they do it right away. They try it right away. Uh, they don't hesitate. And that way you feel that uh, you also are not wasting your time, that you are investing that time and that energy into uh, your teammates, young but prepared, that uh, will help you as a teammate and your team to perform in the future. So it is not something uh, unselfish. It is also selfish because <laughs> the uh, ultimate goal is for LAFC to win games. doesn't matter who is on the field. If it's Ilya, if it's Hugo Lloris, if it's Jesus Murillo, or Luca, or Eric, or Nathan, right? So um, that's what we all should look for. And I'm sure, uh, I can assure that we are all looking for uh, inside this building. See, we, I knew it, Ilya. You're a selfish person, and this is what happens. It was, you, you were you, you pretending to be unselfish. You're being selfish the whole time. <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, hey, Ilya, great to chat with you, man. You're so gracious with your time, and this, I know this is a, a really interesting week.
for you for a variety of reasons. So uh, thanks for sharing that beautiful answers. And we'll, we'll see you out there Saturday. You, you didn't Monday. say anything. I'm just uh, noticing we have Garrett, like, kind of. It's a little bit. No? Out yes. I see. Oh, oh, was it crooked? We have to do yeah. the whole thing again. The painting was crooked. We have to anyway, start the I think it's, right. it's a computer. It, it, it's us, not him. <laughs> it's the computer. It looked fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, we look forward to David Martinez's hair, and we look forward to seeing what you have for breakfast on Saturday. Thank you. Fantastic. Really. And um, congratulations on the not just the podcast, but the intro. I love the intro. Awesome. Sarah to and everyone's going to be very happy to hear that. Behind it's a good scenes. intro. And it gets you, you excited. Gets you pumped. Yes. <laughs> okay. Using well, the, everything. And we'll also see what's going on with the hair for everyone. And because I'm a selfish person, I'm going to show you the best photo in this building. Okay, this for our audio. That's, for those that's me on. lifting Supporter Shield 2022. Oh, there's so many good photos out there. There's so many good photos. It's a museum, uh, the Performance Center, and we see one. There's one upstairs where it's you, Giorgio, and then Gareth and Carlos telling a joke, and then Cal Jennings drinking a water. It's my favorite photo in there. <laughs> So well, you know the one. That's my favorite. It is actually Carlos, Giorgio, Gareth, and then two secondary uh, characters. Yes, on Cal the, Jennings. Uh, Cal and Ilya. <laughs> Cal and Ilya. Oh, no, not Ilya. Anyways, there you go. Every, no such thing as Ilya being secondary, primary, leading his forward. Against his former club. Big, big moment there. Uh, but he's all LAFC. Thank you, Ilya. Thank you for the, the kind words on the opening. And we'll talk to you soon. Maybe not too soon thank because for, we got to. Thank you for changing my mood um, after <laughs> yes. the past weekend. And let's focus uh, all of us uh, on, on this next one. On you the heard next. the man. You heard the man. Ilya Sanchez. Thanks for joining us, everyone, on Inside LAFC Podcast. We'll be back again next week. Great review. Download, subscribe, tell a friend. We'll see you out there. BMO Stadium Saturday. LAFC going for three points. So long for now.